One of the key things I've learned over the last 20 years is logistics can make or break you. How you set up the room can just absolutely limit your ability to have a great event. Let me give you some examples. Oftentimes I'm in a big ballroom and they have an air wall and they have to remove the air wall and guess where they put the stage? Right below the air wall. What's the darkest part of the room? Right there. Most hotels, in fact, I'd say one in ten have extra lights where they can flood the stage. I've been to an event with, I'm speaking in front of 250 people, could be a thousand people, and the presenters are virtually almost in the dark. If people can't see, they're going to check out. So make sure when you go do your room preparation and you're doing your uh, initial visit, ask them about what lights are in there. Lighting is crucial. Light equals energy. Have the lights up as much as you can. What you can do if you're using a rear projection PowerPoint, have them unscrew the light bulbs above just the screens can make a big difference. People don't consider stage. Stage height based on how many people you have is essential. I did an event yesterday, University of Michigan, their athletic department, their MGO Blue Day. We had about 250 people, okay? I'm 6'3", 16 inch, 18 inch stage was okay. But if you've got 1,000 people or 1,500 people, you've got to have a much higher stage or people are looking around heads. That is crucial. How you set up the chairs. My recommendation, if you're doing a big opening or closing, at all costs, try to avoid round tables because you have to have the room much, much bigger. 500 people at 50 rounds of 10 is huge. That makes a big difference. Try to have them close in chairs. The other thing is if you have a room, and there's a document on my website that says Room Setup and Logistics. All these details are there, so you don't have to take such copious notes. But the rule of thumb is this. If you have a room that's a rectangle, you put the stage on the long wall so people are close. You want to avoid the bowling alley effect, right? When you set up the chairs, if you tell, tell the hotel, hey, set up a chevron for us, okay, or set up theater-style chairs, they'll likely do a big middle aisle. Don't have a big middle aisle. Have faces there where you can connect with. Have people close. If you tell the hotel to set up the chairs, they'll stack them one right behind each other. Don't do that. And ideally, if you've got the room, put four or five or six inches close, you know, separated so people have some elbow room. You set a row here, and then you offset and stagger every row behind. You have aisles on the side of that. You'll have them angled in about 45 degrees, so every belly button's right in the middle of the stage. Number of chairs. Why does that make a difference? You tell the hotel you want 500 chairs, you know what they're going to do? They're going to set six or 700. That's just the way they do it. I don't know why, it's just the rule. Tell them specifically, if you've got 500 people, you want 510 chairs, because here's the rule. You can always add chairs, but it's very hard to take them away, because if you have 500 people and they set up 700 chairs, guess where those 200 empty chairs are typically? Yeah, right in the front. And I had one presentation, there was nobody in the first 16 rows. Guess where I did my presentation from? Not on stage. I was in the 15th row working the audience standing on chairs in that 15th row as best I could. It was the only way I could connect. The room setup and logistics are just essential to having a great event. Perhaps the biggest overall problem is this. And unfortunately, over the years, I've had some companies call me, Chip, we'd like you to speak at our convention. And at the last minute, for example, they thought they were going to book me. They said, Chip, we don't have enough time. If you don't have enough time for a quality speaker to open or close your event, here's your problem. Less is more. You got too much put in there. Have less key items that you want to have. When you do your convention, for example, you want to say, hey, here's our theme, here are the deliverables, here's what we want to drive home, how can we do it? Oftentimes, there's too many sessions, not enough time for the people to interact. You've got to give chance for people to talk. Have a best practices session. People want to hear from the best. If you think less is more at this convention, we've only got so much time, it's going to be crucial. Bringing in the right speaker in the morning, for example, day one to kick it off, set the tone, get people excited for being there, get really, really clear why they want to be there, can change the energy for the next two or three days. Think about how you can cut down. Look at your agenda. Make the breaks a little bit longer. One of the things to enhance interaction also, 
people tend to sit with clicks with people they know, okay? So I've got a networking game. If you contact me or you can see it on my meeting planner page, when you're having an opening cocktail party, what do people usually do, right? They come in, they stand around and talk to the people they know. I've got a really cool networking game card that you can give out prizes for where people are forced to go out and find somebody, for example, you prepare the card that went to Notre Dame or is a big fisherman or won salesperson of the year last year. Also, when you have a meal and if you've got rounds, assign tickets. Put it on the back of their name card that they have to sit at a certain table. Also, with your name cards, it's important, put the first name really big and the last name small. It's hard when you can't even see the person's name. Another thing to build interaction at the event, what are you doing as a team-oriented event? How can you do some kind of community service piece where you're helping other people? I've seen you're building care packages for the troops. I've seen them build uh, bicycles for uh, underprivileged kids. Do something where people have to come together for a mission. That's very effective. Next, lack of a call to action. You've got people there for one day, two days, three days. How you open the convention is important, but how you finish it is even more important. I've carved out a nice niche, and if you go to closingspeaker.com, I own that domain, you can see a video about how to choose a closing speaker. I think I'm uniquely gifted to also do that. How you close the convention, how are people going to be walking out the door, what's that last hour? You can't get up there and say, well, have a great day, I hope you uh, guys go out there and make it happen this year. That's not going to work. Having that last hour with the clear call to action, we were here, here was the theme, what specifically am I going to do because I was here? What behavior needs to change? What are my marching orders? But more importantly, why? Why am I going to go for it? One of the events I've done over the years with great success, you can see it on the Meeting Planner page, is the Board Break Experience. It's a great team building event, giving people the chance to step up and work together to accomplish a key goal, but identify barriers they need to break through. What's been holding them back? What limiting beliefs? What are they going to go for and why? We literally teach them how to put this on the board and smash through it with a sense of commitment and urgency. You can see the video right there. That is an awesome way to end your event with a clear call to action. And they leave with an anchor of this board. And this board will sit in their office for years reminding them of them that moment. Putting on a fantastic convention, everybody, doesn't happen by accident. There's also a key you have to have is the right sticky theme. And you got to reinforce that theme with a cool, uh, Add specialties. It could be a hat. It could be a pen. It could be a flash drive. It could be a t-shirt. There's so many unique things you can do. Doing a room drop, for example, that first night with a specific note, thanking them for coming, telling them it's going to be a great event. There's also another document on my website you can download, ideas to help you have a great event. Little things you do stand out. Review this video, see what you're doing, share it with your meeting planning team. If I can serve you at all, consider me speaking at your next event. I'd love to have that happen. Thank you so much for watching.